here for Pops Art, and I am giving you a very sneaky peek of Gareth Sampson's new exhibition, which is opening here at Milani Gallery. And isn't it absolutely dynamic, electric? It's jagged. It's, it's got so many edges, but then it's so soft and fecund in so many ways, which so is Gareth. How are you, Gareth? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I am so happy to see you because last time we caught up was in Venice. Uh, 2019. 2019, and you've been trying to get back here for a number of years. COVID disrupted things. How do you feel be, to be back in Brisbane? Uh, good to be released from Victoria. Yes. Uh, because, as you know, um, I did a great show for Josh back then, yes. and all Victorians were locked out yes. of, um, of everywhere, really. <laughs> yes. So it was the hardest lockdown, apparently, in the world, mm. our, our state and, and our town. And it drove, it drove people crazy, really, because there was no flexibility. And um, so the only good thing about it was I'm, I'm kind of um, locked into Sorrento Studio making a lot of work. Yes. And, uh, but, 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 you know, <laughs> it's, it, it, it wasn't as good as being here. Yeah. But Georgia Bo, who, who works here, uh, had people uh, video the show. Yeah the opening yes. and walk arounds and you yourself did yeah I, well I got Josh to do a great with uh, Georgia did a great walkthrough and they're actually really good <laughs> I think they want my job now <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but you know it, it, all artists want want the atmosphere yes. of being at their opening and to to try to gauge and sense people's reactions yes. and because it, when you're home with your studio and your art and, and you, you, it's just the, the art and yourself and you might have a partner who, or wife or whatever that, who's involved in all of that. But you still, you still have no idea how it's going to be received. Mm -hmm. You might think it's terrific, yes. uh, but that's no guarantee you might sell any. And, you know, I'm a professional artist, so you obviously want some to sell, yes. you know. And, um, and even at this point, it, do you still get a bit nervous or anxious before your opening? Because I just think it's quite horrifying. No, 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 no. no. I, this is my six, sixth champagne, so oh, right, okay. no nerves here. So, so it always helps the, um, you know, the, the the jangling nerves a little bit. But, but what what is really reassuring is that to, to walk up here today from the hotel or whatever, and to see the works on the wall. It's better than I thought from, from how I thought it would be yes. because as I was explaining to Georgia, I didn't know whether I'd sent enough work uh -huh. because in previous shows, the works have been bigger mm -hmm. in the main room. Yeah. And uh, can, can we walk in there? Yeah. yeah, let's go in there because, I mean, you definitely have enough work, but it's not just... Sorry. It's incredible work. The colours are so, like vibrant, discordant, there's chaos, there's, there's uh, patterns, there's, you know, it's all, all the elements merging and popping at once. Is this sort of how you're feeling? Well, uh, in a way, <laughs> but, but in the previous show that, you know, there was a giant picture on that wall, for instance, yes. called Call Me Ishmael, yes. which was about Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a picture that took up that whole space, you know, one painting. And, and Let's walk over here because this is really like... There's, like all your paintings, like there is layer upon layer of story and line and narrative and colour. Talk us through what this painting is about for you. Well, for a start, um, and I'm not being critical, but, but I need, never think about what they might be about because the, the, painting is all, the paintings always start out totally abstract. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever say... Oh, I've got this religious theme and I have to have to go to the Old Testament and check my facts. And never, never, never do that. So it's, it starts out in a very abstract way and then little things crop up during the act of painting. For instance, this figure here and, and this figure here yeah. and this head here. Okay, slightly spooky. And, and then, then the picture takes on a kind of a feeling for me which is like quasi-religious or something, mm. pseudo-religious, where I suddenly think, this has suddenly got um, a religious theme in a way. Yeah. So the title of the painting is um, The Prophet's Delicate 
dilemma. Now, in the Old Testament, Testament, it's the prophet always saying, you're going to get flooded. You're going to get killed. Lightning will strike you. (laughs) And it's all bad. The prophets never give you options of good things. But the prophecies have so much power, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. So suddenly this prophet, which is here, is suddenly prophesizing, whatever the word is, only bad things. But his delicate dilemma is which bad things, which bad thing will I say, fire and because there's so many at the moment, is that what you're feeling? No, not necessarily uh, <laughs> as literally as you're that. getting swept away by the biblical proportions no, of this no, painting. No, 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 no but, but it, it, it took over the way the painting finally came to be. But if we step back, um, it, it might be a tough ask, but it really is a big head. Oh, yeah. It's a big head yes. with two birds. See the beaks? I can see the beaks. I can see one. Well, there are two. We have some. Bird, bird one, oh, yeah. bird one, yeah. bird two, linking with this form, yeah. like a duck's body or something. Yeah. But they're only thoughts I have after I've painted it. Yeah, right. It must be such a lur- lucid, lurid, or lucid <laughs> state <laughs> when you paint. She always gets this way with me. I don't know. <laughs> Um, lucid state when you paint. <laughs> you do crack me up, I've got to say. You will edit this, won't you? <laughs> Goodness me. Um, yes, there must be. And before, earlier we were talking about almost the process between working on these pieces um, on the wall and then the, sm- the smaller, uh, more collage-like work. You're well, sort of going between the two. Well, what, what, what happens is that, um, as I explained before, the studio at Sorrento is about the same size as the small gallery behind us. Yeah. And what usually happens is I've got two large paintings against one wall, yeah. much like this, but they'd be closer together, uh, on milk crates. And they'll be being painted over a period of maybe up to five months yeah. in layers till I get them to the point that I, I think I can't do any more, otherwise I'll fuck it up. Yes. You know, so I have to leave it... A, it really at that edge mm. where it's disorientating, yep. uh, but people aren't sure and they get involved in looking at the painting and if you can imagine crossing a creek in the country where there are little stones you have to cross to get to the other side. Yep. So they get to the other side in viewing the painting, but when they return, some of the rocks are gone. Uh-huh. So they, they can't get back. Right. So I want the painting to trap them trap them visually, psychologically, even spiritually, yeah. in a way they don't understand why they either hate it or love it. I love that. You know. So is that like a state of disequilibrium? Uh, not to me. Okay. But, <laughs> but, 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 you know, people's reactions is... Oh, no, for the viewer. Oh, for the viewer, it's classically painted, right? So in, in very um, historically correct ways, technically. Mm. But what I'm doing with the elements is putting them down in unpredictable ways yes. so that they, they can see a base there of landscape mm. and then they can see the thing is stable, right? It's not going to topple over. Mm. So once they've realised, okay, that's on the ground, right? And there are these two pink shapes there on the ground and then there's this shape. So they've seen all that initially, right? So the next step any of you would, I think, normally take psychologically you start getting to into what's going on inside then they might go back to the title then they try to make a link between the title and what's going on but if they don't it doesn't matter but to me they're abstract paintings sort of non-linear and maybe five or six dimensions involved more okay more more because the painting over three or four months to make it like over here this is like first marks, mm. all this under stuff and all, all this complicated stuff comes much, much later. Yeah. Yeah. And, then and the sort of graphic lines and etched exactly. into the work, exactly. Exactly. this sort of white, very f- like sharp the, edge piece. It's an awful way of explaining it, but I'm styling the picture. I love styling it. I think it's fantastic. No, but that's okay. I'm styling the picture, and, and, um, but I would never let it out. If, if it didn't affect me in some way. Yeah. 
because if it was just a, 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 an average Gareth Sanson painting, <laughs> um, I, I would think uh, I don't need to let it out, yes. you know, until I work back on it. You know. But you have all of these great Sansom paintings. So can we pop over here and look at maybe this one? Because it seems to have two parts to it. Um, and the title says it all. And what is the title? Yeah, there's nothing there, is there? <laughs> Number 14. <laughs> Rub your finger on the wall, it might reveal itself. <laughs> if I, let's take maybe next show. No, 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 no. This, this painting is very, very obvious title in a way. It's called Abstract Painting with Guardian. Now, a guardian guards you. And there are actually movies called Guardian of the Galaxies, yeah. science fiction movies or whatever. They're one of my favourites, FYI. So on the right-hand right side, you've got a very almost traditional abstract painting yeah. it, from the line to the right, mm. except Italian landscape, yeah. Florence or something, yes. you know. Northern. I was looking at that. that yeah, was, it birds, really birds catches your eye. It lights at night and it's a little uh, bell tower or church or whatever. A little bit of figuration there, a sort of a sculptural figuration there, mm. a little bit of landscape here, but it's basically an abstract side, yeah. and it, and it's anchored by the right, the white structures, that that holds the whole right sa right side together, mm. in a physical yeah. way, and artistic. And would you say that like there's these rep repetitive squares that are again they're like they, they're anchoring they're not windows. But they're like anchors or...? Well, they, they're stylistic things to hold this picture. Uh, yeah. the, kind of like um, Paul Clay or someone, yeah. um, Mondrian even, yeah. where it's making that side sing, you know. But over here, it's totally static. Yeah. And this is the Guardian. Yeah. And this Guardian is clearly an out-of-space kind of form, yeah. you know, in a George Lucas movie or something. And that's the Guardian. And you say static, but I see fluidity in that. Well, that's good. Yeah. Like that feels really fluid and loose and organic, where this feels static and, and yeah, um, no, it's good. It's rigid. If you read that as something flowing, that's fine by me. But in a literal explanation, I masked that off at a certain point. Right. This was al almost finished. And there was nothing over here. Right. So I very quickly really established that and it became a spiky figurative form. And the spiky figurative form became the Guardian. Mm. And the Guardian is protecting this side of the painting, if that's not too fanciful. Oh, I love it. You know, so, so we've got God over here, a Guardian here. Where's God? Isn't this God? No, no, no. no. Oh, no. you said it was God. No, oh, the I prophets. Prophet. Prophets considering God. No. No. No, no, no. The prophet in the Old Testament really is not saying anything about God. Okay. He said, I'm going to flood this valley and kill you all. Okay, yes, <laughs> right. yes, yes. That's a prophet, right? Is, well, this, lightning, is this God? Lightning will strike you. No, no. This is called looking for God in abstract art. Oh, wow. Looking for God in abstract art. And, abstract, and the title of the picture is looking for God in abstract art four. So number one is the Museum of Contemporary Art, MCA. Yes. Number two is the Michael Buxton Collection mm -hmm. in Victoria. And number three is at another gallery at the moment. And this is number four. So I was looking for God in abstract art. Yes. And the idea, the idea is, it goes right back to an Ingmar Bergman film in 1957 which you may or may not be aware of, called The Seventh Seal. Yes, I do know that. And The Seventh Seal is like a knight uh, returning from, from the wars against the Muslims. Yeah. And, and they lost, actually. So he's come back to his village in Sweden, and the very start of um, The Seventh Seal, it's a black and white film, um, you, you see the knight and his manservant, um, coming up onto the Pebble Beach yeah. in Scandinavia somewhere, yeah. probably Sweden, and they're exhausted. Yeah. You know, they've got their swords and their chain mail armour, you know, and, and flags and shit. And then they look up to the other end of the beach yeah. and there's a hooded figure there. And we, the audience in the cinema, we see one side, the two people returning from the Crusades, yeah. 
on the other side, this hooded figure. Then they look towards the hooded figure, you know, and then the camera comes around to the hooded figure and, and the face is a skull, but it's painted on. Mm. It's not a mask. Yeah. It's all white makeup. Da 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 da. So the night is exhausted, and it's played by a famous actor who's not with us anymore, anymore called Max von Sydow. Yes. So he goes over, and he says, um, he says, "Oh, who are you? What are you doing here?" <laughs> with subtitles, of course. <laughs> and and um, and and this enigmatic figure with just all black, just this white thing. He says, um, "I've come to take you away at your time," and. Uh, and, and he says, I'm all right, I'm fit, I'm well, I want to go to my village, check yeah. my family. I don't want to go. And, and uh, what, what, what is this? What is what is going on? You are, will be coming with me. And um, obviously, there's nothing religious about this figure. Mm. It's actually death. Yes. Actually death. Yeah, yeah. So they, they sort of struggle with the notion of what's going to happen next. And... Um, I think either death says, or the knight says, um, what if we play a chess game? And the knight says, if I beat you, you won't take me now. And death says, of course, of course, we play a game of chess. And this is white. And I was so shit scared watching this when I was 17 years old or whatever. And that's another part of the story I'll come to. But anyway, the whole movie, they're playing this chess game. Every scene in the movie, over onto one side, you see them playing the chess against a tree, against a village, or whatever, while all through the movie, the knight is trying to find proof of God. Because there was no proof of God when they were praying, when everyone was dying, when they were fighting, da-da-da-da. And um, he's questioning the whole business, you know. And, and, you know, the seventh seal... Um, w was the seventh seal around a book. And w with the seventh seal was pulled away from the book, it meant there was a full half hour, hour of silence in heaven. That scared everybody, that there's nothing. That suddenly there's silence and they'll go, ah, you know. So, so all through the movie there, there were these nihilistic thoughts and so forth going on. I'll cut to the chase. At the end of the movie... He's seen people burnt to death, supposedly witches, but they were just young girls who weren't witches. And, and he sees other people, uh, the plague and pestilence and death and destruction back in his native Sweden or whatever. So he's more depressed than he was on in, in the Crusades. No proof of God. Yeah. Pray to God, no one's answering. Yeah. You know, not an unfamiliar thing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, so they get back towards the end and um, he's getting sort of, used to the idea that he's, he can do nothing about it. Yeah. Uh, but there's still the chess game, which means if he beats death, um, he might be saved. Right. But so does he want to be saved? Well, the game goes on, yeah. and he thinks he's got, he's got, I think he's got, he thinks he's got death yeah. checkmated. So he says, ah, checkmate. And death goes, oh, no. And death goes, go, and then that's checkmate. And the night, the night... He's done. Yeah. He's done. So the very and and so he and a few other people who've been collected by death yes. through the movie all have to go to where they're going. Mm. The final scene is just so enigmatic and powerful in the history of cinema. Yes. It's silhouette of a hillside, yeah. and death and his, uh, f someone working with death is playing music, yes. and they were going up in silhouette, mm. almost dancing their way to death and the unknown. Mm. So here, yes. here, this is called looking for God in abstract art. The knight was looking for God yes. all through that film, mm. and which, which has been uh, a recurring theme through all my art for a long, long time. This idea of looking for God, you know, is God out when you're doing the gardening <laughs> or when you're cleaning the dishes or when you're praying and no one's answering and all those sorts of things. So in this, this, the idea is, the idea is that um, is God maybe in Gareth Sansom's abstract painting? So okay, this is getting very serious now. Very dense. This is dense and heavy, but profound.
No, I wouldn't. Pre- I wouldn't pretend. I would you just said God potentially. No, 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 but God, God's around us. Yes. People say to me, so if God's around us, He's right here watching us doing this, yes. and He's in this painting. But there are subtleties in this painting. Do you know what a grinding disc is? In, um, in, in is that for like when you're? Y- yeah. And it grinds. Yeah, yeah. Here's a grinding. Ah, uh, yeah, I noticed those. So in sort of bit of three D relief. We're talking about. But God might be in a grinding disc. Yeah. But so, so anyway, we move across. <laughs> and you, this is profound. I know, I know. It's, it is. A, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the journey I'm here. Really like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll be sent away. <laughs> so what I've got in this really complicated painting are these little figurative references which I'm not going to go any further with, but there's a little suggestion of something there, yeah. a, f- a laughing figure, mm-hmm. laughing back at us. See the eye and the mouth? Oh, yeah. And over here, a, ca- a kind of complicated, uh, metaphysical, abstract sculpture figure Ooh. there. And over that almost here. looks like a jellyfish and a gun to me. Whatever you want. Yeah. And over here, a head in profile mm. looking up. With a yellow skull cap, yeah. and 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 these are figurative references in this painting that again is totally abstract. But then to confound <laughs> confound us again, a birds hovering ac- above corpses, yeah. you know. And they're like the birds that were over there in that um, your European landscape. No, different breed. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I was onto something there. Anyway. <laughs> This is a very, very um, powerful image, yep. the cross, yes. in a religious sense. I'm not sending it up, but I'm putting it there because I'm conscious of it. Yep. But the last, the last thing about this painting is there are two village scenes. Mm. So think back to the seventh seal yep. and over here. And over, and over here, down here. So, so looking for God in abstract art, you've, you've got something... <laughs> sort of um, common and boring Mm. to ground the painting Mm. at the very bottom and they're made out of felt from a kid's toy. Oh, so I know, fuzzy felts. All of that. Yes. And I've cut them out and stuck them down. So you've got got these little stars. I love that. Oh, yeah. I want to touch it, but I won't. So the picture is divided in two Mm. and then you've got this, this green figure head form which is painted to- totally differently with with the technique artists would know is called scumbling yep. where you use a, um, a dry brush over paint and just drag it across mm-hmm. to get the tonal changes mm-hmm. you know so that becomes a if you come back a very strange figure with its tongue out but with the roof of a bil- building and these these discs are right through the painting by the way not yeah. just in the background and, um, and is, is that the same size as the disc, this no, piece? That's paint. That's no disc there. I think, I think there could be God in there. Could be what? God in there. In your painting, <laughs> potentially. <That's me. laughs> is, there, is there something else in these pictures or is it not one of these pictures? I often, I often pat. Better follow you around with the microphone. Uh, that's all right. The, the, um, yes, over here, okay. over here. Two more of these houses. Down here. Yeah. But over here, what, what do you see? It's death. Yeah, the Grim Reaper. The, gra- the Grim Reaper, and it also looks like, um, like a deep, dark grave, like a subterranean universe in which he is the overlord. Well, he's on a ledge, and this is a figure of some sort, uh-huh. a spiky science fiction type thing, yeah. and the sky scene yeah. at the top, and structure provided by the red, red lines yeah. making structure and so forth. And that's a real key across all the images, isn't but, it? But the Grim Reaper is the same as playing chess with death. Yes. It's your time. Yeah. So they say... Uh, that your your metabolism is at its like your heartbeat is at its slowest at three o'clock in the morning. 
right? So up the, one of my, oh, I don't want to put it that way, but in a house in South Yarra, yeah. I'm upstairs, and I might wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. in a cold sweat yeah. at that time, you know. At 3 o'clock. I often wake up at 3 o'clock. Yes, yes, but you don't get a scraping on the window, do you? No, you do. Well, I imagine <laughs> the scythe is scraping my window. You really do get that. You actually I've feel had, it. I've had the feeling that, um, well, I'm nearly 84. Yeah, so you get these feelings. Yeah, like you, know, you really are looking at your own all mortality. Thinking chums are dead. Right. People I grew up with, school, yeah. everything. Yeah. And, and even younger ones are dying around me. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of like this mortality thing which runs through the pictures. Yeah. And God. Yeah. And is there God watching me? And da, 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 da. Yeah. So when I put, and, and this, this image was in some of the paintings from the last show here, I couldn't attend because of COVID. Mm. And it's sort of like, it's sort of like the chess guy. Yeah. And he's got his scythe, yeah. you know, and, it, and it's like a, it's sort of like a well-known, a well-known symbol, mm. you know, and there's his hood. I've just painted it a little bit stylized, yeah. but you know, checkmate. I t forgot to tell you about the chess game. The chess game was, um, uh, um, I've won, and, 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 and he says, um, uh, I, uh, he says, um, no, the knight says to death, you cheated, to, to the guy who's with the white makeup on. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the, the death guy says, death always cheats. Oh. And I was, put, so put a chill. Because yeah, there's no rules. No, but put a chill up my back. Yeah. That, that, actually, that gives me a chill. So I saw that film. Uh, there was a, a movie theatre in Melbourne called The Savoy mm. in Russell Street. It only, it only showed continental films with um, French and German and, 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 and uh, Scandinavian, whatever. Mm. And, um, and, and, uh, and I was very impressionable to that sort of film when I was 17, 18, 19, 20 or whatever, rather than Hollywood yeah. blockbusters. You're coming from Australia, that sort of is like an otherworldly culture so which we don't have. So, so the Seven Seal, you know, I had to get the last tram home to Ascot Vale, which is near Mooney Ponds, yeah. where I live with my family. And there's this lane in the dark, you know, that I had to walk up, you know, to, you know and I'm like 17 or 18, and I was quite skinny and small. And, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still going at 84. So... If that if that if death's been chasing you all that time, you've really He's you know chasing all of us, yeah. you know, and we've all had losses, yeah. you know. And Josh is in Melbourne now, you know, for a reason. And and um, you know, but the point I'm trying to make in a fairly clumsy way is, um, the older you get, you, you realise there's a certain inevitability to all of this. Yes. So what that what that does to me is I I I, I um. I'm drawn to the studio, mm. you know, to, to do what I do. Yes. You can't stop, yes. you know. And, and does it make you want to do more than ever? Like, it, do you still feel you've got so much more to say, do, create and paint? Well, this year already, I've had a show at Station Gallery in Melbourne, yes. which was like 20 things. Yeah. And now the show is 20 or more yes. with these paintings on linen and works we'll walk into in a moment yes. on plywood. Well, let's, let's head that way because um, I think we'll have a quick wrap around here and then I think we're going to invite everyone just to come and see the opening tomorrow, which is on tomorrow. At 6 o'clock here at Milani Gallery. 4 to 6 at Milani Gallery. Now, we'll just quickly go over these works because these are completely different. Process, feel, they feel loose, they feel spontaneous. There's a lightness to it, but you still have that really multidimensional kind of depth I feel, but these are much more personal, aren't they? Like only visual diaries? There are, no, 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 no. They're only person, personal in the sense that in some of them there are photographs of me or people I know. That doesn't mean they're autobiographical. Yes. It just means that from my box of archival material, yes. I've thought I might, for instance, put a photo down of myself when I'm like one year old. In so, this. so this is you here. Yes, yes, That's your dad, family. your mum, yeah, brother, and mother and father, and and so I've put that down, yes. and and up here, I've got a an image uh, from a Bruegel painting, yes. 
a Flemish master painter and, and um, I've repainted into it. Mm. You know, I've, I've pinched it, obviously. Yeah. But the, the, the key details are Bruegel. So the title of the picture is something like, I don't know, have it in front of me, but it's something like, my family would never have heard of Bruegel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either with mine. Yeah. I don't think many families do know Bruegel. No, but, but the thing is, I think it was quite per- pertinent that I'm here, just born a year or two, my, my brother in his cub uniform, and my eldest brother, and my mother, and my father who had one arm, lost one in the First World War. It's quite a poignant photograph. And it's, yeah, it is a, po- you can feel a tension in there, but it's, it's a beautiful photo too. From the family archives. And so then I've done some scribbly things from old bits of paper that I was working on. Then, then I've cut this out of the piece of cardboard, which was an old painting or whatever. And then I've, then I've cut out things from an adult comic and juxtaposed those with this, with this. And I just thought, I just thought, well, my family had never heard of Bruegel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, a, there's quite a bit of humour in this lot, isn't there? And let's just finish up on this one. Now, is that you up there? Yep. Well, what's it say on you the... look like the prophet. What's it you look like a prophet. What's, I can't read it. You'll have to, something, I need my glasses. <laughs> Tori, what's it say? Or he can't read it either. Let me get Hang on. Let me get He's coming in. The picture is called Atomic Lanes. Uh, Atomic Lanes. Atomic Lanes, classic Irene, which is a, a American bowling thing. Oh, yeah. yep. Like the big Lebowski yes. bowling. Yes. Right? And they all had custom shirts. And that shirt was from an op shop that yeah. somebody gave it to me. So that's what the picture's called. But the vibes you're giving off here, like, you look like you mean business. You look like a mafia boss or a prophet. Well, at 26, I did. Right. <laughs> and was that the vibes you were strutting around Melbourne with? No, 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 no. But th- th- there was a Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, I'm doing teaching during the day with a tie on yeah. and my head down properly and parted and, yeah. and, and, and doing the right thing by education and my role and everything else yes. but at night you know I was, I was going to clubs yes. and doing everything else that you do at clubs and meeting people and enjoying life and so forth and then get up in the morning comb my hair living at home with my mother who was then alone making me porridge in the morning <laughs> and then at night time woo! Not, quite like that. <laughs> not, not quite like that but, but there, there was there were two sides to me you know and it, not quite uh, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde even within your academic, like you're an academic for 30 years, that was sort of like a big part of your life. But then there was that dualistic side to you, which is well, sort of parts, represented three, in the paintings. Three parts, three parts. One was the day job yeah. where, you know, one had to be entirely responsible, you know, in all sorts of ways, running a tertiary institution's art school yeah. with a rich history going back to 1878 or something. And to end up being dean, head of school or something. And, you know, what you, you always realise that this was an important thing yeah. and so forth. But you still had to paint your paintings. Yeah. And, you know, and you couldn't be compromised in what you did with your paintings. Yeah, you had to be the leader, didn't you? You did. You did. But, you know, you, you might have, or I might have compromised what I might have done with my pictures because I had that role. Yeah. So when I... When I resigned at um, 51. So were you saying there was a level of compromise creatively for you well, in that period? The paintings I painted because they provided you with a studio right. that came with the job. Yes. I was meant to paint, I was meant to show, and I was re- me- meant to run the art schools. The only art school that did that back then because that was the history of the place. Yes. And so the studio was next to my office. And so I'd go to meetings and, and do the stuff with money and finances and administration and all that sort of stuff. And, and then I'd go to the studio. But uh, I don't know that I could have made these plywood works yeah. being de- dean, of, dean of the art school. Yeah. So, you know, there was a lot of pressure and tension building up at my life for various reasons. 
and maybe the time I spent in India twice contributed to the idea that, look, if I don't go now, I'm going to be a crusty, nasty old man. Yeah, and you'd yeah. be such like a mean old bastard then, wouldn't you? <laughs> and depressed at, at 65 uh, in a university or whatever with everything that goes with that. But no recognition, no recognition as a painter yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. That would be like the end of you. Well, when I did resign uh, in um, 91 and started showing, I was with Rosalind Oxley in City and da 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 da. And there were interviews me, with me and so on for the next two years. It was always sort of like um, Gareth Sanson, ex Dean VCA. Did you hate that? Of course I did. Of course I did because that was. And, and actually, somebody came up to me when I resigned and they said, uh, What are you going to do now? Like, I'm not a painter, I, I wouldn't be painting. I said, oh, I'll do a bit of fishing, maybe collect, <laughs> do, collect some stamps, you know, you know travel maybe. And, 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 uh, and, 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 but then I had to fight my way out of that attitude towards me as an academic yes. and as a well-known academic running the best art school in Australia at that time, I think. And I guess when you're in that role, you've got power, you've got resource, you've got uh, a structure, you've got... Um, you know, a really clear, you even would have a clear purpose because that's your role. When you step out of that kind of institution, you've absolutely got nothing like that oh, going on. More than that, more than that, I was on professor salary. Yeah. You're rich. No, no, fortnightly coming in yeah. without having to even lift a paintbrush. Right. And then I went out and the first two shows sold nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. And were you terrified at that moment? No, did you think, no, no, did you think no, I made a mistake? No. No, 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 I didn't make, think I'd made a mistake. But what I was dreading was going back to another art school and saying, oh, could I do some part-time teaching? You know, Almost mortifying. A lot of people have, have had to do There's it. nothing wrong with that. No, of course there's not. Yeah. Of course there's not. But, 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 you know, my grand plan took 10 years to work out, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. And then things, the things didn't really start to click into pay, place where I, I was was really starting to paint some fantastic pictures by the year 2000. And so how, how old were you then? Well, I was uh, well, 60. Yeah. So from, from 51 to 69 years. Well, I had a show with Ray Hughes, right? Yeah. He pleaded with me to show in Sydney. Yeah. You know, I went up and cleaned his stove. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't eat there. It was so filthy. So I cleaned his stove and, and cooked a curry and, 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 and lived up there for a couple of days and then we hung the show. And that was like 60 works on paper, only $3,000 each and some fantastic works, not one sale. Not one. That is mortifying. Not one. Yeah. And, he, and he, he, he was very depressed that he didn't come through for me because... Yeah, but responsible for you. I needed the money, you know. But anyway, you press on. And I think, you know, this show is a testament to, you know, it's like wonderful to see a photo of you as a baby and then going in there into seeing, you know, examining your mortality. There's, uh, it's like your life threaded through the work. And I think, you know, the testament to you as an artist, as a person, as a deep thinker is <laughs> really in these paintings. So I think everyone should come and see them in real life because it really is some, like you could spend a day here just well, cruising in... Deep deep into it. paintings. It's yeah. not like I'm sitting down looking up a, a Rogue's thesaur thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you somehow. But thank you so much. It's been a really great chat, as always. Um, I admire you and your work and, you know, probably the best painter in Australia right now. Am no, I going to no, say no, that? I can't leave it at that. Oh, what are you going to say? There are three or four that I still think um, you know, make me worry, but I'm not going to name them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and just read whatever that says. Just follow the direction.